hiring foreign R&D workers lead to exploration. And this is joint work with Paul Anker, who is an assistant professor at Schema Business School in France. And also during this uh, series here, there was a very large interest in uh, looking at the effects of immigration on innovation and entrepreneurship. And this is also a little surprising uh, looking at the uh, numbers and looking at the fact that during the past decades, uh, the number of international mobile uh, highly skilled migrants increased uh, by almost um, uh, doubled almost over the last decades. And this leads to an internationalization of the market for years and has also then important implications for firms, uh, firm strategies, and also how firms can innovate as it provides firms with opportunities to access a a broader pool of talented workers. So in this paper and in this talk today, uh, we're going to ask the question of how does hiring foreign R&D workers affect firm level exploration? And I'm going to structure the talk as follows. First, I'm going to give some uh, theoretical background and there I'm specifically drawing on the literatures on learning by hiring and um, migration and innovation. And then I'm going to introduce uh, the data and methods I'm using. And here I'm uh, making use of the Danish linked employee employee data. So we're looking at this phenomenon in the context of Denmark. And then I'm going to present the results and they will be uh, structured as follows. First, I'm going to uh, present the uh, results of some correlational analysis. Then we're also exploiting a policy change to get closer to causal identification of the um, effect. And then also I'm going to present a couple of robustness checks. And I'm going to conclude by a short, um, with a short discussion. And to give you a re preview of the results. So what we find is that uh, the recruitment and hiring foreign R&D workers is generally positively associated with exploration. However, we also find that these effects are most pronounced when firms hire foreign workers that have a low geographical overlap with the incumbent R&D workforce. And we also find that in contrast to hiring native, hire, uh, native workers, the effect is also uh, large and uh, positive if the new, uh, newly hired foreign workers have a low educational distance to the incumbent R&D workforce. So to then also briefly motivate, why is it important to look at um, exploration and not just innovation and here, uh, we build on this very large um, and well-established phenomenon that um, firms need to also increase their technological scope every once in a while, otherwise um, to, to stay in a competitive over time. However, exploration also requires the recombination of novel and unfamiliar knowledge. And this knowledge oftentimes is located outside of firm boundaries. And therefore it's important to, for firms to also access knowledge that sometimes outside the technological area and um, also oftentimes embedded in different geographical contexts. And one direct channel is the uh, mobility of people to transfer this knowledge to the firm uh, itself. And this has been largely studied by the literature on learning by hiring, um, which has uh, looked at how firms are affected by the experience and knowledge that is brought by newly hired uh, workers. And what studies in this area have mainly done is to look at spillover effects between firms. So are firms more likely to cite um, patents from firms where they hired people from? But then also studies have looked at um, direct effects on innovation, but also looked at um, how hiring scientists affects the technological repositioning of firms. However, what this literature has so far not done um, in great detail is to look at um, different effects arising from the international mobility of scientists. However, this has been uh, a phenomenon that was largely addressed by this other big literature on immigration and innovation. And in this literature, migration has mainly been conceptualized as a channel to, to diffuse knowledge across different countries. And in this area, there are many studies looking at uh, effects on productivity. So on the one hand, um, uh, productivity of uh, collaborators. So in a large study, um, Moser looked, uh, and colleagues looked at the effects of um, 
Jewish chemists uh, fleeing Germany um, before the Second World War. And then they looked at how that actually affected um, the productivity of uh, chemists at the, uh, in the US. And they actually found that uh, this effect was largely driven by um, collaboration and also mentoring. And similar effects have also been established then at the firm level. Um, so studies by Bill Kerr, but also Kelly Lawson, look at how uh, the uh, migration affects innovative productivity of firms. But then also here, um, studies have, been, have gone further and looked more at the actual mechanisms. And uh, there, one thing that has been found was that um, migrants also give firms access to very contextual knowledge and knowledge that may otherwise be not easily accessible to firms. So for example, in a study by Trudri and Kim, they look at the diffusion of herbal um, patents and exploit a, uh, um, a policy change mainly affecting Indian and Chinese inventors in the US. And this has also been scaled and shown on the more regional and national level, showing that immigrants also introduce, uh, induce uh, industry specific productivity shifts, mainly towards uh, industries where the country of origin is specialized in. Now, also in the firm level, this can, these mechanisms can be um, expected to be at place. So here, um, we mainly argue that immigrants can act as a source for novel and complementary knowledge. And this is exactly because on the one hand, they may be specialized in different uh, technologies. And on the other hand, they are also carriers of knowledge and routines that are otherwise embedded in different geographical contexts. And therefore, we, uh, our baseline hypotheses are that on the one hand, the share of foreign R&D hires is more positively related to firms likelihood to explore novel technology fields than the share of newly hired native R&D workers. And on the other hand, that the share of foreign R&D hires is more positively related to the number of exploratory technologies than the share of newly hired native R&D workers. So here we argue that on the one hand, hiring foreign R&D workers leads to an increased likelihood, but also increases the number of exploratory patents. However, there may also be some trade-offs firms face when hiring R&D workers from abroad. So while to some extent getting access to new and distant knowledge may be positive, if the distance is too large and firms are not able to integrate it, this will also have a largely negative or will have a decreasing uh, effect on uh, exploration. So we come up with two boundary conditions. On the first, uh, on the one hand, we look at um, the geographical origin and the overlap in geographical origins between um, incumbent R&D workers and newly hired R&D workers. And here we claim that uh, knowledge from new origins will also be more novel. So by hiring workers from uh, countries and regions where a firm has few workers uh, yet, uh, this will increase uh, the likelihood of exploration. However, this is also connected to uh, some costs. For example, uh, especially regarding communication and coordination costs. So these workers may uh, speak different languages. There will be uh, cultural differences. And also this knowledge has to be contextualized and also integrated in the current processes of firms, which may be not straightforward. However, we also then expect in the uh, context we're looking at um, that these costs would actually be not as large. So we're looking at a sample of highly skilled people. So most of the people in our sample have a master's or PhD degree. And then we're also looking at um, people who are actually mobile and also interact frequently, which will also um, in, uh, facilitate integration of knowledge. And therefore, in our second hypothesis, uh, we argue that the positive relationship between hiring foreign R&D workers and exploration is most pronounced when firms hire immigrants with a low geographical overlap. Then what most of the literature has also argued is that there's an importance of 
the technological distance. So that goes back to um, the paper by Daniel Sabar, who looks at technological of hiring scientists and technological repositioning of firms. And here the general tenet is that uh, most learning opportunities arise from by combining different fields of science. However, again, if the knowledge is too similar, there are simply no new learning opportunities. But if it's true that um, hiring scientists and uh, those foreign workers also bring routines and knowledge that is embedded elsewhere, then we indeed would uh, expect that hiring foreign R&D workers is on the one hand positively related to firm level exploration if education distance is small, but also if it is large. So this means that um, even at low levels of educational distance, migrant uh, foreign R&D workers will still foster uh, technological exploration of firms. Now, regarding our data and sample, um, we make use of the Danish linked employee employee data, which we matched with um, patent applications to the European Patent Office. And here we look at a sample of uh, highly innovative firms between 2001 and 2013. And we define those firms in terms of that they should have at least one patent. And this reduces the sample size uh, quite a lot. And they should also have at least five employees. And they should also conduct R&D activities at a continuous base, which means that they should have at least one R&D worker per year. We define R&D workers in terms of um, uh, workers that have at least a master's and PhD degree in a STEM field. And they should also have a job function, uh, which is linked to the use or production of advanced uh, knowledge. And here we end up then with a sample of 376 unique firms and 3,732 firm year observations. And to give you an overview of the descriptive statistics and the sample uh, per se. So the firms in our sample uh, apply for around 0.4 um, patents per year. And the probability to explore a novel technology field is around 0.18. Um, um, in total, on average, um, they employ uh, 462 employees and hire on average 5.6 uh, Danish R&D workers and only 0.4 um, foreign R&D workers per year. Now to define our um, dependent and independent variables. So our main, indep uh, main dependent variable is uh, exploratory activity. And this we define as a dummy denoting one of a firm applies for a patent in an IPC4 class, which it has not patented in before. Then secondly, we also look at the number of those patents. And to also adjust for quality, we look at uh, the citation weighted number of exploratory patents and weight the number of exploratory patents by the number of citations it received um, within five years after application. Now it's also quite challenging to then um, disentangle the effects of foreign and native hires. So what we do is we divide the R&D workforce of a firm in four categories. On the one hand, it's the uh, share of foreign hires. Secondly, the share of native hires, the share of foreign stayers. And then we use the share of native stayers as the baseline. So in our regressions, all the coefficients will be evaluated against the share of uh, native stairs as the baseline. In the sample, we then also look at defined migrants as um, R&D workers who migrated to Denmark at the age of at least 21. So this is to ensure that they have at least received some education and maybe even some work experience in their country of um, origin. And of course, hires are defined as uh, workers in that first year active at a firm. 
Now, the distance variables um, to measure educational cognitive distance, we make use of angular measures. And in terms of the cognitive distance or educational distance, we make use of um, the education codes that are provided by um, Statistics Denmark. And look, uh, compare the vectors of the incumbent workers with the vector of um, uh, newly hired uh, workers. And in a similar way, we also do this for the um, geographical overlap and geographical distance. So here we take not just countries, but we actually aggregate countries into uh, broader groups of countries. And this will, on the one hand, um, also to a large extent already take care of the fact that many countries are very similar in terms of their culture, which uh, is also often uh, times debated to be a driver of uh, innovation. And then um, for both of these uh, distance measures, we take, um, we, we dichotomize both of these distance measures and make a dummy if this, the distance is above the median level. Then regarding our method, we run on the one hand loaded um, uh, if, uh, models and on the, to, to measure the likelihood and then also negative binomial count models in order to estimate the effects on the number of patterns. Besides our independent variables regarding the shares of uh, foreign and native hires, we also include a number of control variables, such as the firm size, R&D intensity, um, the patent stock, the share of patents uh, resulting from international collaborations, also some diversity measures for the uh, incumbent R&D workforce. And then we also include um, industry near fixed effects, as well as um, a dummy for um, exploration in the past five years. Then to uh, come to our results. So our results for the first hypothesis, which stated um, that the share of foreign hires are uh, positively related to firm level exploration. We indeed find a positive effect and we do not find any positive effect for the share of um, migrant R&D stayers and neither for um, native R&D hires. And to put this finding in, in these uh, numbers into context, so consider a firm with nine uh, R&D workers. If this firm hires one additional R&D worker, this would increase the likelihood to explore by around 8%. So the effect is uh, sizable. Then uh, regarding the <clears throat> Uh, number of exploratory patents. We indeed find that also in this regard, there's only uh, a positive and uh, strongly significant effect for the um, share of new migrant hires, but we can, are not able to find any uh, similar effect for um, the share of new native hires, neither the share of migrant stayers. Regarding our um, second hypothesis, um, regarding the uh, geographical overlap, here we are also able to confirm this finding, showing that um, indeed also hiring um, migrant R&D workers with a low geographical overlap is strongly, uh, uh, strong and significantly positively affected to um, the number of explored patents. And then one interesting thing is that we also uh, ran regressions on the actually non-exploratory patent counts. And here we cannot find any uh, significant uh, association with um, hiring foreign R&D workers. However, we find positive uh, effects uh, from the share of newly hired native R&D workers, as well as um, 
hiring R&D worker, foreign R&D workers with a high geographical overlap. So this uh, then shows that uh, kind of uh, gives some more robust historical results and shows that um, hiring uh, closer workers leads to more exploration uh, exploitation. Finally, regarding our results um, for our third hypothesis, here uh, regarding first of all native hires, we also in line with the theory find that hiring native hire native workers is only positively related to exploration if um, the ed educational distance is large. So this really confirms um, the prior. However, then when looking at um, foreign hires, um, we actually find a, a positive and significant effect from hiring um, foreign workers with a small educational distance. However, our findings regarding um, hiring workers with a large, large educational distance are less clear. While the effect is economically sizable, um, the significance level drops just below uh, what we would consider significant, which can also be due to uh, simply a small sample size. Now, these results are mainly um, correlational. So uh, then we also attempted to get closer to uh, causal identification and tackle the energy energy issue. And here, the main challenge was, um, and here what we're trying to do is to exploit a uh, exogenous shock affecting the supply of highly skilled migrants. And Denmark, has a preferential tax scheme, which is intended to attract foreign R&D workers. And this tax scheme was introduced in uh, 1992 and granted a uh, flat tax for foreign workers uh, of around 30% compared to the 55% that uh, regular, the, the regular tax rate of 55%. And this, the uh, scheme lasts for three years. However, in 2008, this scheme was then extended from three to five years. And here we argue that this um, increased actually the supply, made, made it more attractive for workers to move to Denmark uh, more permanently and increased the supply of um, foreign workers. Now, well, this gives some this, uh, variation in the Across time, um, the cross-sectional variation is not as straightforward. So here we build on the assumption that firms, um, that not all firms, not all industries will be affected to the same extent, but that industries um, also prior to the extension uh, differed in terms of how, to what extent they relied on foreign R&D workers. So here the assumption is then that firms and industries relying on migrants prior to the extension will be especially affected by the extension. And then that's how we define our uh, difference in difference, uh, where the treatment group is defined as firms in industries with an above median migrant dependency prior to the um, tech extension in 2008. And um, here we can see some uh, descriptors. Um, on the x-axis, we have the different years. And on the uh, y-axis, we have the um, share of newly hired foreign R&D workers by, on the one hand, the treatment group, but also the control group. And what we can see here is that prior to 2008, um, the share was mainly um, parallel. And then in 2008, um, the treated uh, firms in the treatment group indeed experienced this very large increase. However, then there's also a large drop in 2009, and this is uh, probably and most likely due to the uh, financial crisis, which then also disrupted um, much of the economy. And then 
uh, we can also pick up this effect in um, in uh, the diff and diff. And here we plotted the um, coefficients. So we find that um, prior to the extension of the tax scheme, there was no difference between um, the treated and control uh, groups. But then in 2008, uh, firms in the treatment group actually increased their probability to uh, explore significantly more than firms in the control group. And this effect lasted for around um, three years. And this is also very much in line with the effects that we found in the um, previous uh, uh, results that uh, where we could not in find any um, um, effect for migrant stayers. So this speaks to the fact that hiring migrants may have a a uh, positive effect in the short run on exploration, but actually not in the long run. Then we also uh, run some additional analysis uh, looking at um, where this, uh, the effect on exploration may actually come from. And uh, here we specifically look at knowledge sourcing. So, um, here we argue that if it's the true that R&D workers are aware of different types of knowledge, um, they, they will also affect uh, the way firms source knowledge differently than uh, native R&D workers. Um, so then we also look at the uh, what kinds of uh, patents and technological classes um, firm cite in, in their patents. And uh, what you find is that um, indeed there's a positive effect from uh, foreign R&D workers in terms of uh, citations to novel IPC classes, uh, also in terms to uh, citations to novel regions. So, and also in terms of citations to the countries where migrants actually come from. And then we also conducted a number of uh, robustness checks. So on the one hand, uh, what, we, this, uh, what our different diff setup can also not take care of is selection into hiring um, migrants. And to make sure that, the, our, um, that firms that hire migrants and those who are not uh, are as uh, similar as possible. We also conducted a course and matching technique and um, find very similar results. We then also tried to, uh, 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 we also rerun our result, uh, our analysis with a different dependent variable. And here we um, define um, exploration in terms of a five year window. And also we look at um, not just exploration in terms of um, citations to uh, patenting activity in novel IPC classes, but we also look at how different the overall um, composition of IPC classes is between years. So here we make use of uh, the measure introduced by Daniel Saber in his 2009 paper on technological repositioning. And also in this case, we find um, very similar results. As mentioned before, we do not find um, a positive effect on non-novel patent counts, which speaks to the effect uh, that uh, hiring migrant has an effect on, um, not, not just on the overall activities of a firm, but specifically on exploration. And then to also rule out that our results are driven by the largest firm, Firms in our sample, we drop the 5% of the largest firms and also find very similar results. Um, then it still remains the case that um, uh, we still have certain limitations. Most importantly, of course, that uh, we still suffer the problem of selection. So what kinds of firms actually select into hiring migrants and um, 
the problem is also that these um, drivers are unobserved to us. And then uh, another uh, problem of our setup is that uh, our results are in fact contingent on firms patenting regularly. So there may also be um, effects beyond patenting and ex exploration that we are not able to capture with our um, patent-based exploration measure. So to uh, conclude uh, and to summarize our findings, we find that um, hiring or recruitment of foreign R&D workers is in general positively associated with exploration. Um, we find that this effect is uh, most pronounced if hiring foreign R&D workers, um, uh, when, when firms hire foreign R&D workers uh, with a low geographical overlap to their incumbent R&D workforce. Um, we also find that in contrast to native hires, um, that there's a large uh, effect even at low um, levels of educational distance. And we would also like to underline that um, this indeed may be a, a only a short-term effect and that uh, firms can achieve similar uh, effects on exploration by hiring uh, domestic workers with a large um, educational distance. And um, with this paper, we then also contribute to mainly two uh, literatures. So on the one hand, we extend the literature on uh, learning by hiring, uh, by also looking at international mobility and underlining uh, the argument that it's important to not just look at uh, the education technological distance, but indeed international mobility also matters. And uh, secondly, we contribute to the literature on migration and innovation by on the one hand, underlining the argument that um, foreign workers are not uh, merely substitutes for domestic workers and uh, that they specifically can affect uh, exploration when it comes to innovation. And with that, I would like to thank you for your attention and uh, give the word to Dan.